water-cooled motors are going to provide about 15 more horsepower over last year's air-cooled versions. We haven't got our water-cooled car ready yet, and I can tell a definite difference on the straightaway that they have horsepower I don't have to offer right now. We're already quicker than we were last year, and as the engines are developed, we're going to be quicker and quicker all year. Well, it's both the new engines and a lot of new chassis that are working with the water-cooled engines. I'm sure we're all going to go a good bit quicker. Most of the uh, new water-cooled cars have uh, about 10 horsepower more, and I think that's going to reflect in uh, speeds. I'll predict now that you'll see a, a new track record and a new top speed at every race course this year. Sports fans streaming into Phoenix International Raceway know this will be a special day. With the air-cooled engine that has been the trademark of Super V Racing since its start in the late 1960s is now being replaced officially in this first USAC race of the season by the water-cooled variety. And what this will mean for Super V Racing is the big question everywhere, even among some of the big-name Indianapolis drivers who have gathered to watch the event. Alan, so do you feel that this new Super V engine is going to be a quicker step to get these from the Mini Indy cars up to the Champ cars? Well, I definitely think that uh, uh, the Super Vs are going to be a step towards the Indy cars. I think that uh, it's going to be very competitive racing. I think it. Uh, well, I really like the series. I think it's going to be a great series. Gary Bettenhausen, you've been in a sprint car series. You've raced midgets. You've been in Indianapolis. You've been racing a Super V. Do you feel that this new Super V water-cooled engine is going to be a quicker step toward the Mini from the Mini Indy up to the Champ Car Series? Yes, definitely, Pete. I think that the engines are going to make a little more horsepower. The cars are going to be faster. And uh, I think that the Super V right now is probably the best experience that a driver beginning could uh, probably get into to learn how to, to run an Indianapolis car. Denny Angayas, 1977 USAC Rookie of the Year. Do uh, you feel that these new Mini Indy cars are going to be the next stepping stone into the Champ cars? It will undoubtedly give uh, more drivers the opportunity to gain the experience needed to make the step uh, into uh, other forms of racing, uh, one of which would be championship racing, if they so chose. Not all the Super V racing teams have wanted, nor been able to make the engine conversion, nor will they all race today. Jim George's car 21 still has its air-cooled engine, while Bob Lazier's new car now proudly carrying number one because Bob was last season's Robert Bosch VW Gold Cup champion, is now being fitted with its new water-cooled power plant. Talking with Peter Fioresi, vice president of the team's sponsoring organization, Jim explains the difference between the two engines. Pete, the big difference in one word would have to be potential. The air-cooled engine has pretty much peaked in terms of its overall performance potential, and now we had to make a change, and we've made it to the water-cooled engine. Well, the basic problem that we were experiencing was that of uh, engine reliability. With the air-cooled, the slightest overhead generally spelled disaster to the engine, whereas with the overhead cam design that you see on the new uh, water-cooled engine, we are now allowed to make a mistake with the engine and yet not have an appreciable drop in the overall performance of the engine. So consequently, uh, we'll have more power and greater speeds. What are your predictions for the speed records that may be set in 1978? I expect that the, uh, the speeds for the 78 Mini Indy Series, especially due to the water-cooled motors, <laughs> probably be a second to second and a half faster on all the tracks that were raced. Possibly a second and a half to two seconds. Each, each time we go out? Normally we're running about 132 mile an hour lap average last year on the one to one and a half mile tracks. So I think we'll get a lot closer to 140. They could have top speeds of 150. I would think this year we're going to be going 165, 170. I think they have to go at least uh, 175. Race time nears and the cars come out onto the track. Out 
have a field of 26 cars, 15 have the new water-cooled engine, being raced for the first time in USAC competition. Now the cars follow the pace car around the track, warming up tires, checking chassis feel and suspension. Super V veterans own the front row starting position. Fred Phillips is the pole sitter. Tom Bagley outside. Then come Oval Track graduate Tim Richmond and Super V rookie Peter Halsmer, followed by the 22 other cars entered in the race. And now, green flag. Bagley grabs the lead on the first lap of this 62 lap race. Both Phillips and Bagley have problems. They drop back, and rookie Tim Richmond in car 98 grabs the lead. Dennis Firestone in car 55 is second. Very close competition here today compared with the Indy car. Side by side competition in the corner. Firestone moves into the lead, with Richmond pushed back to second. Firestone and Richmond fight to stay ahead of hard chargers Peter Halsmer and Bill Henderson. And all four leaders are using water-cooled engines. That really tells you something. cars are working their way through the field. Uh-oh, Bob Ciccone's engine lets go, and it's laying down a track of oil on the raceway. This brings out the yellow flag here on lap six, and all drivers hold their position. Right now, it's Dennis Firestone first, Tim Richmond second, Peter Halsmer third, as the service vehicles come out on the track to clean up the oil. Well, it looks as though this cleanup job is going to take a few minutes. So while the yellow is on, let's go back and sound out some of our guests on a vital subject, safety. Super V drivers have traditionally been associated with safer racetrack driving. Does this new water-cooled engine's capability for speed mean any relaxation of these standards? I don't think they will. As a matter of fact, I think they're probably going to take them even a little further. Uh, further because one of the biggest problems out on a racetrack is the oil that you run into. And uh, the new generation engine, which is water-cooled opposed to air-cool, is a lot less stressed. There were just more possible sources of leaks for oil, and they contributed to some of the accidents we have. And I think. The water-cooled engine, of course, has just fewer sources of leaks and seems to be pretty reliable from what I've seen for the initial stages. And uh, th from that standpoint, I think it might be safer. Well, I think they're uh, going to help the safety standards considerably. I uh, don't really care for the air-cooled engines. I don't, they're not nearly as reliable as a water-cooled engine. And so I see a lot more safety coming into it all the time. We're scrutinized very, very closely regardless of what we do. As long as we keep the drivers aware of uh, the, you know, the increased speeds and have safety meetings, which we do. We talk about how to react under different situations on the track. And uh, I think we improve, as a group of drivers, we improve ourselves along with the speeds. OK, the oil has been pretty well blotted up now. And it looks like the green will weigh for the 17th lap coming up. And look at Richmond's brand new Lola take charge.
Richmond about to shut the door on Dennis Firestone. Oh, another change in position. Phillips comes out of turn four and passes Hall from around the straightaway to take third place. That's car 69, Gary Bettenhausen, a famous name, starting to smoke. But just watch this fight for second place. Here's fierce competition between Firestone and Phillips. Meanwhile, Bettenhausen's problem continues. And there he goes into the pits to get the trouble straightened out. By the way, if you've noticed the flags here at Phoenix International Raceway, they're at half staff out of respect for the recent passing of Arizona's governor. It's Phillips. He moves his number 73 to second on the back straightaway and has his sight set on Richmond, the leader. And both Richmond and Phillips put still another lap on the back marker. Phillips still second. And look, Herm Johnson, who started out dead last, continues to press forward. Now, Richmond is really pulling ahead, building up a big lead. 